The links page of our ePortfolio website is to contain links to websites of related interest. For example, if you're a, uh, a teaching unit on poetry, you might want to uh, links to sites on the poetry of Emily Dickinson. Um, now, I'm currently on the home page, but I'm going to go to the uh, menu speed button bar and click on site uh, view to get the uh, site map for our website. And then I'm going to select the links page, which is to contain this information. And in fact, I can click on the page button at this point or I can just double click on the links page to jump right into that page. Now, of course, the page is currently blank, but implicit in the requirements for this uh, portion of the project, we're going to need to embed a table in here that will help us to organize our content. Now, the speed button bar contains a table tool container. I'm going to click on this, and then I'm going to click and drag within the bounds of the layout area on the links page and notice I'm going right up to the right border uh, master border without overstepping it and uh, let's just make a gentleman's agreement here that we want to have two columns one with the name of the content and then the second will have the URL or the web link to it and we want at least three links so we're going to need one for column headers to label the columns and then three for the content so I'm going to need to have four rows in this table. I'll then click the OK button, and here's what you get. I can stretch on the resize grab box. I have a table that's got four rows and two columns. Now, again, as I've mentioned previously, we want all of our page content to be aligned within the bounds of the layout area. So I'm going to arrow this up until it stops on the top master border and I'm going to arrow to the left just to make sure that it's contained within the left uh, master border range and then we can simply double click within each cell and I'll type site in the upper left hand cell in URL for universal resource locator in the other cell now if I click and drag across these two columns I get a black drop arrow, a selection arrow, not unlike that you might have seen in uh, your work with Microsoft Excel or other spreadsheet uh, products. Now, what we want to do also is to make sure that the uh, font, uh, the fonts that we're using in this table are consistent. Now, automatic will by default uh, result in Times Roman. But we're going to click on this, and I'm going to select Verdana because that's the uh, site style of choice. And I'm then going to click just to the left of the first row. You see the left black pointing arrow. That arrow indicates that I've selected both cells in row one. And I want to do two things. I want to set vertical alignment to middle and horizontal alignment to left. That way everything will be aligned in the middle of the cell and to the left. And in fact, if I click on the lower boundaries of that row, I can drag it down a little bit to make it a little bit bigger. Well, first I have to stretch the table and then I can make it a little bit bigger. There we go. Now, for a further effect, I'm going to select the cells in this row. And again, I'm going to click on the left border and Let's add some additional effects. One of them, of course, is um, font coloring. We can, we can choose a font color of blue. We can boldface the font. And we can also adjust the table border size. And by that, let's take a look at 